hi viewers welcome to this introductory talk on what is called a field why i am discussing this is because i am planning to start a course on complex analysis which uh, probably uh, will be from the next lecture that's why i planned to discuss what is called a field before I actually formally go into the complex number system or before I formally introduce the complex number system. Okay. So let us start with a non-empty set F. So let F be any non-empty set. And let us define two operations called the addition and multiplication on F. So, and we define uh, the binary operations namely plus called the addition and dot called the multiplication on F as for any ordered pair a comma b in f so plus of a comma b is the a plus b right so that is plus is a mapping from f cross f to f such that uh, image of any element a comma b under the map plus is exactly the a plus b for all a for all ordered pair a comma b in f cross f all right so let me freeze this user letter f with the vertical bar all right and since it is a binary operation, so A plus B is also in F, right? And uh, dot, which is a multiplication, is a mapping from F cross F to F such that uh, the image of any ordered pair a comma b under this mapping dot is uh, equal to a times b a b for all ordered pair a comma b in f cross f cool so this is how uh, we have defined the operations addition and multiplication in the non-empty set f then uh, we say that uh, the non-empty set F with these two operations, uh, namely addition and multiplication, is a field. Okay, we say that F is a field with respect to uh, the operations. plus and dot if the following axioms are satisfied if the following axioms are satisfied so what are the axioms the first uh, is that I'll call this to be a1 okay 
okay satisfied I, uh, i'll add uh, something that is it's uh, the, the following axioms are satisfied for all x comma y comma z in f so what are the axioms the well the first axiom is that uh addition is associative okay plus is associative well what do i mean by that it means that if i add x with y and then uh, the output and then whatever the output i get if i add that with z it is same as adding y with z first and the out and adding and then adding the output with x okay so order in which we add three elements of the set f does not matter that is what uh, is a1 or that is what does it mean to say that uh, the addition is associated the second axiom is that there should exist okay there exist are uh, basically the spatial element uh called zero so there exists an element zero in f such that if i add any element with zero in any order i should get the same element back and whatever the element you are picking uh, to add with zero that element should be in f so what do i mean by that well i mean such that x plus zero is equal to zero plus x that is equal to the same element x okay and x is in f that's why i started with x y and z to be any arbitrary element of f this is called the existence of identity so zero here is called the identity so zero is called the additive identity it's called the additive identity of the set f with respect to the operation addition okay and this is uh, this axiom is the existence of additive identity the third axiom is that for any element x in f there should exist another element uh say y in f such that x plus y equals uh the y plus x which is equal to zero right so in this case y is called additive inverse of x y is called additive inverse of x and is denoted by x inverse or minus x whatever but minus x is often we use to actually denote the additive inverse okay so this axiom must be satisfied and the fourth axiom is that x plus y should be equal to y plus x. It's called the commutative axiom or commutativity. Okay, it's called the commutativity. So that means if you add any two elements, then uh, order should not matter adding x with y or y with x should give me the same output that is what a4 is saying 
okay so collectively if i have uh, a non empty set f wherein the operation addition is defined and such that uh, a1 a2 a3 and a4 are satisfied then we say that f with that operation with the operation of addition forms an abelian group okay you must have studied in the first course on group theory okay so basically collectively if i want to speak then i say that f under the operation addition is an abelian group okay this is the first requirement to be a feat so uh, with respect to the first operation f should be an abelian group well these are not all the axioms which are required uh, for a non empty set f with respect to the operation of addition and multiplication to be a field right so what are the some what are the uh, additional uh, axioms well i'll discuss that i'll call it call it m1 because now i'll uh, talk about the similar kind of axioms but with the second operation so the first uh, axiom with respect to the second operation is as follows okay it's a uh, associativity again but with respect to the second operation with respect to dot what does it says well it says that if you multiply x with y first and then whatever the output you get that is also in uh, f because dot is a binary operation if you multiply x with y first and then the output with z that should be equal to multiplying y with z first and the output and then multiplying the output with x okay order in which we multiply three elements uh, it does not matter that's what it says should not matter right the second is that there should exist the special element in f let me denote the special element by one it's f such that if i add any element sorry if i multiply any element of f with this special element i should get the same element back and the order should not matter that is such that x times 1 should be equal to 1 times x and that should be equal to x okay and this should be true for all x in uh, f but x we already uh, we have already mentioned what the x is right here x is the arbitrary element no need to write for all x in f okay? that is understood again here uh, one is called the multiplicative identity and you can prove that in a field multiplicative identity is always unique so it's called the multiplicative it's called the multiplicative identity i'm assuming that uh, we uh, i'm assuming the uniqueness of that Okay. uniqueness of the multiplicative identity that's why i wrote the multiplicative multiplicative identity and uh, m3 says that the th third axiom with respect to the multiplication is that for any uh, x in f minus the zero there should exist y in f uh, such that x times y equals the y times x equals y okay so in this case y is called multiplicative inverse
of x and is denoted by one by x or x inverse you can also denote it by minus x but uh, we have already freezed minus x to denote the additive inverse of x so so basically we'll freeze now from now on we'll freeze one by x to denote the additive multiplicative inverse of x in a field okay and the fourth axiom is that uh, x times y should be y times x for any x and y enough okay it's called the commutative with respect to the multiplication that's understood that's why I'm um, I'm only writing commutativity okay if you want you can write with respect to dot okay and then there is one more axiom which actually uh, says that which actually relates the addition and the multiplication of tracing and that is called the distributive property or distributive History view activity and it says that x uh, dot y plus z is in fact equals the x dot y plus y dot z which is which can be written as y z only either you write y dot z or y z y z it's the same thing so I'll write y dot z and that should be true for all x y and z in f okay right and also uh, in fact no need to write this because commutativity holds but still i'm writing y plus g dot x it should be equal to y dot x plus c dot x no need to mention this because by commutativity it actually follows immediately okay so let me write like this x uh, plus y dot c is x dot c plus y dot c. So they are called uh, left and right distributive property. Okay. In one case, the multiplication distrib multiplication distributes over the addition from left. In other case, from right. Okay. But uh, as you have the commutativity, as the multiplication is commutative, so. Uh, if you mention one the, then the other follows immediately right why because x if you write x dot y plus c as equal to x dot y plus x dot c this is equal to okay y x plus z x by the uh, commutativity of the operation uh, dot right so this is equal to y plus c dot x right so they are equal but it, only when you have uh, the um, fact that multiplication is commutative. Otherwise, you have to write them explicitly. So, I will prefer writing only one. For example, in a ring, you have to mention both the uh, left and right distributive property. Okay. So, if F with respect to the operations plus and dot satisfies axioms okay why oh, should erase this satisfies uh, axioms a1 to a4 a1 to a4 and m1 to m5 a1 to a4 m1 to m4 or m5 it's uh, m4 and the d4 let me write d5 then f is called the field with respect to 
the operations uh, plus and dot addition and multiplication right and we write f with respect to the operation of addition and multiplication is a field we simply write this okay so let us see certain examples of a field which uh, are where, where again i'm not going to prove all the axioms i'm not going to verify all the axioms precisely one by one but i'll see, quickly say that uh, consider f to be equal to r which is the set of all the real numbers and plus and dot to be usual addition and multiplication of real numbers usual addition and multiplication of real numbers then you can see that uh, r with uh, uh, these two operations in fact satisfies a1 to a4 m1 to m4 and d5 right so check that uh, it's an exercise for you r with respect to the operation for addition and multiplication is a field basically you need to check a1 to a4 m1 to m4 and d5 right you need to see that these two operations defined on r satisfies all the properties this is the first example the second example is the set of all rational numbers denoted by q under the operation of usual addition and multiplication uh, is again a field right so these are the two examples of a field now the, let me give a non-example So set of all integers under the operation of uh, usual addition and multiplication is not a field. Okay, so you can easily see that with respect to the multiplication, z minus, with respect to the multiplication, 2 does not have multiplicative inverse. Okay, which is one of the requirement to be a field so it's not a field again it's an exercise for you hint I already gave but this is very simple exercise okay so these are uh, so I gave two very simple examples trivial examples and one non example of a field so from the next uh, lecture i will uh, proceed by introducing the set of all complex numbers and uh, okay if you are familiar with the set of complex numbers then uh, it is an additional exercise for you to check that the set of all complex numbers basically denoted by the set use a letter or c with one vertical bar it's the set of elements of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers with respect to the operations Of complex addition and multiplication is a field. Please do check that C under the operation of complex addition and complex multiplication is a field. I hope that you know how the addition of two complex numbers is defined. If you don't know, then I'll quickly recall. So the complex addition is defined as follows. If uh, 
I have a complex number G1, which is X plus IY. And G2 is suppose X prime plus IY prime. If these are any two complex numbers, then uh, addition of these two complex numbers that is c1 plus c2 is defined as x plus x prime plus i times y plus y prime so you add the real part of g1 with the real part of g2 and imaginary part of g1 with the imaginary part of c2 and the, the complex multiplication is not defined as what you expect but it is defined as follows z1 times c2 is basically xx prime minus yy prime i'm sorry plus i times x y prime plus y times x prime it's not a component wise multiplication wherein you multiply real part of g1 with the real part of z2 and imaginary part of g1 with the imaginary part of c2 because uh, with that definition, you can uh, see some uh, uh, drawback, okay? You can easily see some drawback. Okay, so with this, uh, I want to stop. This is